Hello there, we're going to solve question number one from February, March 2022, paper 2-2. Two, two. This is the only paper 2 you have, you don't have three variants in February, March session, just to be clear. It's written, the reference is given here on the right side here. And uh, the duration, the total duration is 1 hour 30 minutes, and the total marks available is 90 marks. The question we are solving currently is worth 30 marks and so in the exams you're supposed to use 30 minutes for that the timing is really really straightforward because you have 90 minutes available for 90 marks so it's easy to allocate marks right so in question number one part a you see it's two mark question and you should not spend more than two minutes on this well of course a few seconds up or down more or less over here four minutes max you don't even need that you need like much less than four minutes to finish something like that and then you can use the same time on some other question which requires you to use more time over there and of course you also need to leave in some slack you know you don't really have to finish 90 marks in 90 minutes because you need like extra 10 minutes for rechecking at the end so wherever possible, save your save your time. Okay, let's start. Rafik owns a retail business when the business was opened a few years ago. Rafik maintained only minimal accounting records. By the way, <clears throat> this question is going to be about incomplete records. Okay, just to be clear. We state two reasons why the owner of a business might maintain minimal accounting records. Questions like these are quite logical. I won't go deep into them. I have actually copy pasted the mark scheme answer and hidden it for now so you can think you can pause the video think of the answers both of these answers pause it now think of the answers and then you can play okay go go pause all right so hope you you had paused it and now you have resumed to to you know for me to give you the answer say two reasons why the owner of a business might maintain minimal account records what have you thought did you think perhaps the owner doesn't have enough skills and knowledge right perhaps they cannot hire an accountant they don't have their uh, time on their own so they they can't even hire an accountant that's one thing what else the business is not the business is very straightforward it only has a couple of types of transactions let's say only buying or only giving a service where clients only pay you and like it's, it, the accounting is very simple so and it's only cash based let's say you get it so there's no need for a lot of accounting records let's say okay so I guess I I've thought a few points just now let me reveal what what the answer says okay in the mark scheme we don't have to spend much time discussing these okay these are logical lack of expertise content with information that minimal records provide provide by the way here content means happy right the owner is happy with the information that uh you may think it's the content you know called the content that you should, that you create online it's not that content contentment right feeling happy satisfied satisfied the information that minimal records provide less time consuming obviously and less costly you don't have to hire assistants and accountants and you don't need a lot of paperwork you don't need a software right and five four benefits of maintaining full accounting records mm. so it can help you with uh, mm, with tax purposes you know you can you, ha you have the data available so if whenever whenever government policies come in you have your records in place you know sometimes it becomes necessary to let's say have records to, to apply for a bank loan right so that that becomes easier it, it becomes easier to attract investors when when you attract investors you um you need to show them your records right it helps you with bet better decision making now these are from my own mind well i did peek into mark scheme while copying it but still these are coming out of my own mind i'll still reveal the mark scheme answer so you can see what the official answers are there we go <clears throat> okay access to full information about assets liabilities so more informed decisions can be made right oh, wait i have to reveal more okay everything is revealed i guess 
uh, can provide detailed information to support loan application, easier to prepare financial statements more accurately, opportunity for more control over business activities, possibility of fraud reduced, because everything is recorded. It's a four mark question. It, you don't need four minutes for this. Enables analysis of performance. That's pretty good, right? I think most people, even from non-accounting background, can answer this. If they think enough, right? If you, if you think hard enough, you can come up with these points easily. It's not a big deal. And this you can easily expect this to come again in, in one of the future exams. So you, you better, you know, sit down for five minutes, make sure you remember these points, and, you know, the, you, you, mem you remember them faster if it comes up in the exam. Anyway, let's go up to... Well, I had some problem copy-pasting from the past paper to my software. The thing is, this information comes first in the past paper and then comes, you know, the upper part. And then we can scroll left, right. You get the point? That's, you can imagine those are pages on your past paper. The first page, the second and the third, and then the fourth. It's a big question, 30 marks. Okay. More recently, Rafiq has been able to provide more detailed in financial information. On 1st January, okay, now dates are coming in. On 1st January, the business assets and liabilities were as follows. So I'm going to assume this is the opening date. This is first date of the business. Not first, the first, I mean, the, the, the year end is 31st December. That's the first day of uh, New Year, right? Cash in hand, so these are the things they, they had, okay. Some cash in hand, basically the cash account, bank account, opening balances, uh, furnitures and fittings, at valuation, not at cost, at valuation. That's the netbook value, you can say. Trade payables, opening balance is given, fine. Inventory, and then these are, this is opening inventory, that's your opening prepaid rent, fine. Ref, okay, that, that, by the way, is gone. That's like the first page, okay, you got that? So I have sorry, I've kind of messed up the copy pasting part, but now you can forget this. You can forget this. It's not needed anymore. The arrow one, let's continue from here. Fine. And then, okay. <clears throat> if you notice, that's note number one. And then that's note number two. My apologies for messing it up. The following summary for receipts and payments for the year ended 31st December. As we suspected, yes, 31st December is the year end. 1st January is the year start has been prepared for from the business's bank statement. Notice this is from the bank statement. Well, of course, you need to spend a couple of minutes just understanding what's going on. Point out the dates, point out what's going on, right? And then you can get into the question. What is the first question? Let's actually check that out. Calculate the total purchases for the year. Um, I hope you have read the chapter enough and you've done enough questions or at least have had a look at enough questions. You have enough experience to realize that when they ask you this and the question is about incomplete records I'll give you a second think what we're going to what we're going to have to make we're going to have to do something with the purchase ledger control account i can tell okay with experience and i hope you can too you know this is what we're going to do, do do in this one when purchases figures are missing that's what we have to do Especially when they say Rafiq purchases all goods and sell, uh, for resale on credit basis. There's, I don't think there's another another way we have learned in our syllabus to find purchases. Well, there's one way where where incomplete records are given and you maybe even margin markup, but we clearly don't have that here. Okay, there's only a couple of ways. Just make sure you go through the chapters again and again. Okay, let's continue. All sales are made on cash basis. Irrelevant at the moment. A cash discount of 5% was received when Rafiq settled debts with trade payables during the year ended. That is relevant. That is relevant. Very relevant. Uh, and these are the trade payables at the end. We have everything we need for creating a purchase ledger control account. Also, don't forget we had some opening balance. Rent prepaid 1250. Are we ready to start? I think so, yes. I think we're ready to start that. So we are going to prepare a PLCA. Not the best PLCA you've ever made because that's not the requirement. You're just making it for your own workings, right? Not the most beautiful one. Okay. Doesn't have to be the prettiest, I just told you. Opening balance, it's a liability account. It's a payable. It's your total trade payables, right? So we start with a, a an opening balance brought down 
on the credit side because it's a liability liabilities always have a credit balance how much is it 1250 look at it at the bottom 1250 let's write that down 1250 fine um what else do we know about that oh wait my my whoa what's wrong with my board okay wait a second okay 1250 1250 is the opening balance what more let's go above what else do we know anything about payables cash sales banked not relevant yet trade payables okay we paid some amounts to our trade payables we paid this to our trade payables so when you pay your payables you know what happens your payables go down and when your your payables go down where when your liabilities go down they're debited 93 100 93 100 okay these are the payments hope you remember the format of your plca what else anything else related to payables rafiq all okay uh, a cash discount of five percent was received now look we made a payment of what 93 100 we made a payment of 93 100 and that is after the discount of course you pay after the discount you can set the discount and then you pay so if this is after the discount 93 100 is after the discount that means it represents 95 percent of whatever the payment was supposed to be and the five percent is actually the discount so we basically are taking here the percentage units and we divide that by 95 to get value of one percent times five to get value of those five percent discount well, I don't have a calculator. I have to pull it up on my phone. So give me a second. Okay. 93, 100 over 95 times 5. That's 4,900. 4,900. You good so far? And that is discount allowed. Oh, no, no, no. It's discount received. We're dealing with PLCA. Discount received. This is what you receive from your suppliers fine told you it doesn't have to be the most beautiful PLC you've ever made just do it rough fine okay at 31st December the closing balance is also given so what's missing purchases is the missing figure right we will put it there because purchases when you make credit purchases they increase your payables they go on the debit uh, credit side you know that we don't know the amount though we don't know what that is it's a question mark we don't know but we do know the closing balance. The closing balance will be carried down as a, as a credit, 9230. 9, That's brought down to the next year. So carry it down, 9230. Hope you all know what I'm going to do next. To find purchases, I'll just, you know, find the balance here. The balancing figure. 93100 plus 4900 plus nine two three zero it's one oh seven two three zero one zero seven two three zero one zero seven two three zero you don't need to put the totals just subtract twelve fifty and you're good one oh five nine eighty that should be our purchases if you want you can highlight that purchases one zero five nine eight zero okay perfect let me check again just to be sure if everything is fine. Well, I do see a mistake actually. Is it 1250? Ah, oh, my bad. Why did I take rent prepaid? I have no idea. I was supposed to take I'm sure you've noticed while watching the video. I'm sure you've noticed that. It's uh, 11,870. 11,870. The opening trade papers, of course. Obviously. We all, we all should know that. Silly mistake. Let's get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Okay. So let me just change that on my calculator. 107230. Well, that doesn't change. It's the same thing. 107230. 
107230 minus 11870. That's 95360. 95360. Let me confirm again. Okay, that looks fine. 95360. Okay. Well, don't do such a mistake. And I'm, I'm sure you won't. In, in an exam situation, you will be careful with something silly like that. Okay. Next. Prepare the income statement for the year ended 31st December 2021. Okay. Next, we need to prepare an income statement. The one after that, the question after that is about uh, another theoretical question. We'll be done with the whole question of 30 marks. Okay. Uh, well, that does look like a lot of work, but once you keep trying, you will get used to it. You know, you'll get used to it. Uh, and it's not bad. It's, it's like one third of your paper. It's one third of your whole exam. Can you, can you th imagine? If you think about it that way, it's kind of crazy, right? One third of your whole exam. That's, that's, that's this. Okay. Anyway, let me continue. During the year ended. Okay. The question is to prepare income statement. We've already found purchases. Okay. We do not have sales provided anywhere. I don't see sales figure given. So we'll have to find that as well. Right. It's not at the bottom here. It's not above, but we do have one information, one piece of information, which says all sales are made on cash basis. Okay. So it definitely has something to do with cash. Sales are made on cash basis. It has something to do with cash. All right. During the year in the 31st of December 2021, some cash takings were not banked. Well, if you notice, some were banked. Some cash sales takings were sales were banked. And the others which were not banked were used to pay wages. And some others were used to uh, give out drawings. The point is they will give you all the information you need to make a cash account. And so that's what we'll do. We'll make a little cash account. We'll make a little cash account, okay? And we will find sales as a missing figure, got it? Sales will be a missing figure in our cash account. We'll record everything provided, starting from opening balance until the closing balance, everything that's provided. The opening balance here is 840. Cash balance is always debit. What else do we know about cash in this question? We know that some of it was banked. A lot of it was banked. One three two two double zero. One three two two double zero. That was banked. Okay. Some of it was used to pay wages. Some of it was used to give out drawings or take out drawings. Okay. Twenty one five forty. Twenty one five forty and two five eight zero. Two five eight zero. What else do we know about cash? Took goods costing, that will be adjusted in income statement. Uh, fixtures and fittings with a value of 2950 were sold. With a value of 2950. It doesn't mean we sold it for 2950. The value of them were 2950. Um, well, okay, if you look here, disposal of fixtures and fittings, it was sold for 3480. 3480. That's what we sold it for. Minus 2950. That must be your profit on disposal. I'll just calculate that. 3480 minus 2950, 530. That must be your profit on disposal. Hope you got that. The value, the worth, the net book value, I'm assuming that's what it is, is 2950. And we are selling it for 3480, obviously at a profit, as a, at, a, at a gain. It's a profit. It'll be added to other income after gross profit. Okay. Next, it also says cash takings of 1200 had not yet been banked. Okay, so we perhaps we intended to bank it, right? The point is, uh, it was supposed to be banked, not yet banked, but it went out of cash, right? Not yet been banked, though. So that's another, uh, let's say, piece of information. So not yet banked. Well, although it won't appear in your bank, in your cash account like that, but we're just trying to calculate what went out of cash not yet banked but eventually it will be so 1200 the reason they put it that way is the fact that it is not well these are banked and these are not yet banked so they, they, assuming they will they'll be still they will be in the future right um we will get our sales figure as a missing figure because even the closing 
cash is given so the closing closing cash which is 920 is your next year's brought down or this year's carried down 920 on the credit side and this figure over here the missing figure will be the sales figure fine you need to get used to this you need to get used to this okay one three two two double zero plus twenty one five forty plus two five eight zero plus twelve hundred plus nine twenty minus eight forty that one that's one five seven six hundred one five seven six double zero found our sales figure that's what we're looking for you can point this out nicely okay leave those workings by the way these workings won't give you any credit you must show it in the workings column or at the bottom of your income statement right but if you leave them randomly like that the examiner would most likely not award you any marks for that it's better if you label your workings nicely where they're supposed to be so perhaps you will label that as working number one and then reference this later when you're making your income statement okay fine we found our sales figure what else we might have to find we, we already know the purchases what else we might have to find uh, or adjust well disposal that's one more thing this was for sales fine we might also have to find uh, disposal disposal or actually next to it since we are making no 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 okay that's fine disposal disposal would be three four eight zero minus two nine five zero equals five three zero that's profit on disposal okay hope you get that what else do we have to adjust we will have to find depreciation for fixtures but we'll deal with that later not not right now or actually let's do it let's do let's deal with that now depreciation on fixtures let's see depreciation on fixtures okay it, this can be kind of rough but just be nice with it don't make it unreadable in your exam so how do we calculate depreciation on fixtures let's see um okay that that's challenging that's not easy uh for uh, starting with the opening balance the opening balance is Furniture and fittings at valuation two two seven one zero. At the beginning, it was two two seven one zero. That's the beginning of it. That's what we have at the beginning. Next, what happens? Disposal of. By the way, this is the money we got. This is not the value of it, which is going down. You see, that's at valuation two two seven one zero. We put here. That's at valuation. So we must deduct the value which was just which was disposed. So value which was disposed will be removed, 2950. Let's remove that later, but first we can add what was added. Because if you notice, we had some additional fixtures, 8,000 plus 8,000. Okay. What else? Some installation costs, that's also capitalized. That's also part of your capital expenditure, 380. Anything else related to fixtures? Okay, now we'll get to disposal. This was disposed, 1,200. No, 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 2950. 2950 that was disposed and at the end it was valued 23400 well we made all our adjustments let's see what value comes out with our own calculations 22710 without depreciation what's the value 8000 plus 380 minus 2950 2950 that's 28140 28140 and what was it valued at, at the end 23 40. you know what that means that means the difference is depreciation 28140 minus 23400 that is depreciation fine we all got that 28140 minus 23400 that's 4740 47 that's your provision for depreciation on fixtures Okay, let me just uh, confirm the the numbers.
Well, looking good. Okay, let me just close that. Perfect, looking very nice. I was thinking this working space won't be enough on a on a computer, on my laptop. In real life, everything is enough, right? The examiners know uh, what you'll be facing, so they'll give you enough space for, you know, appropriate space for what you're going to need it for. Finally, we might have to adjust. Uh, we have to, it's not a maybe. We definitely have to adjust for rent. You can do it arithmetically again, or you can make the T account. It's up to you. Uh, let's do it arithmetically to save some time, or we can also do it, uh, you know, T account method. If Okay, let's just do T account method. I changed my mind. You can do it arithmetically if you want. I believe in the mark scheme it is given arithmetically. You can check it out. So, rent account. We have some rent prepaid at the start. 1250. Just make sure this is a rent payable. Yeah, we made we made a payment for rent. It's not an income. Just to be sure of that. Rent prepaid 1250. Now when you prepay an expense, that's like your asset. You've prepaid an expense. You've already paid it and it's your asset. That should be obvious to you at this stage. 1250. That's your opening balance. Fine. What else? What else do we know? There was a payment made. So that must be bank credit, rent account debit. That's a double entry, 14750. 14750, okay. Bank. What else do we know about rent? Um, at the end, at the end, rent 1440 was prepaid. And that again means the brought down here will be 1440. Carried down will be 1440. And this will be transferred to income statement or in AS level S O P L statement of profit or loss. Okay. Oh wait, in your A level syllabus also you say income statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mix it up with even a higher level. You go one step above, one step higher in accounting. They will use start using S O P L instead of income statement. Statement of profit or loss. But anyway, uh, we'll stick with income statement. Transfer to income statement. 1250 plus 14750 minus 1440. That's 14560. Again, I'll confirm my numbers. Everything's looking good to me. I think we're ready to make income statement. Okay, final stage of this question. Draw a column. first column here second column we may or may not need the third column there's there's never a need for it but it's it's nice to calculate your purchases figure over there we start with sales okay what were sales we don't have any sales return. I never saw any sales return in this question so we start with sales one five seven six double zero one five seven six double zero next we list the cost of sales cost of sales of course starting with opening inventory okay we have uh, purchases along with purchases do we have any adjustments I think yes we do with purchases, what adjustments do we have? We have, um, let's just make sure we don't miss out anything. Anything here to do with cost of sales section? I don't think so. No, just scroll down for a bit. Be sure of that. Nothing here. Okay. Some cash drawings, uh, some cash takings, okay. No, no, we don't need that. Okay, that's relevant. 480. Less goods for own use. What else? That's it. Straightforward. And then finally, opening inventory plus purchase minus closing inventory, right? Less. Or just, you can just label closing inventory. 
it's up to you you write less you don't write less but you have to subtract closing inventory okay which obviously is subtracted and that should be enough for our cost of sales section so what is opening inventory let's go back down um one double four three zero one double four three zero that's opening inventory one double four three zero purchases were nine five three sixty we calculated that earlier can put that in third column ninety five three sixty less goods for own use how much four eighty subtract that of course okay because your purchase will go down because of that and the closing inventory is 11,920 which is obviously subtracted okay Nine four double eight zero nine four eight eight zero. That's your net purchases. Okay, we're gonna do one four four three zero plus nine four double eight zero minus eleven nine twenty. That's nine seven three nine zero nine seven three nine zero nine seven three nine zero. Okay, and that gives us our Gross profit, almost halfway done, very close to the final answer. One five seven six double zero minus the answer sixty two one zero. Sixty two one zero. Looking really good so far. Yep. All good. That's called gross profit. Gross profit. Okay. Next, we'll add other income, right? We'll add other income. Remember, what were the other incomes? Um, we had profit on disposal or gain on disposal, whatever you want to call it. Profit on disposal. And don't forget, we also had some discount received. That's why you always have to label and point out and note down your workings even here note it down right i remember this during the workings while i was just going through the question i sort of noticed that there is a gain on disposal i must write it down because if you don't write it down in the exam pressure you will forget right so there is profit on disposal and discount received okay dollar sign Let's put, put in the values. Okay. Profit and disposal, 530. Discount received, 4900. Let's put it there with the uh, cross profit. 530 plus 4900. 5430. 5430. And then finally, less expenses. Let's start. We have rent. Okay, I think I'll list it, list it down first and then look for the values. We have, uh, remember we capitalized this one. This is capital expenditure. So we don't have to put that exp expenses. General expenses. Okay. General expenses. Right. Full form of everything that you're doing. And uh, what else? I know it's always a scary. You're going to miss out something. I know that. That's why you have to try and note down everything you notice.
What else do we have? We have um, depreciation. On fixtures, right? Fixtures and fittings. Please make sure you write the whole thing, not just fix and fit. Okay, you have to write the whole thing, fixtures and fittings. And we also had some, actually, wages over here. Okay, it's always preferable to write depreciation at the end, but if we forget, it's fine. We can write it somewhere in the middle, because I haven't seen them deducting any marks for that. 21, 540, we can start putting in values. 21, 540. For depreciation, we got 4740. For general expenses, we have uh, 5940. For the rent expense, we have, we calculated it, 14560. 14560. If you look at the bottom of the screen, I don't know if you can actually, sorry that part one five one four five six zero okay fine I, I think that's all the expenses we have close that one four five six zero plus five nine four zero plus four seven four zero plus Two one five forty. Four six seven eighty. Which will be subtracted. Very nice profit for the profit for the year. Okay. One more thing. I, I think I told you this before, but what you can do is you can point this out. Working number one, working number one. What else required workings? Profit and disposal, working number two. Working number two. What else? Rent, working number three. Working number three. It's a good habit. And I mean, you, you actually have to. It's not a habit. You have to. It's a necessity. Um, finally, depreciation of fixtures. That's working four. That's working four. Okay. Everything's looking good. Let's move on. The last question. Rafiq would like to expand his business by, but requires additional finance to carry out his plan. He can see, he's considering two options. Invite a friend, Khalid, to become a partner in the business. Khalid would, would introduce capital of 10000 Okay. Or apply for a bank loan where he will get a 10000 from the bank. Advise Rafiq which option he should choose. Justify your answer by, choosing, by discussing both financial and non-financial issues. For the financial part, maybe we can just give a quick glance at what what where is he standing right now. So uh, he did he get a good profit for the year? He did. He did earn a good profit for the year, right? What about his cash position at the end? Balance in cash is nine two zero. Um, well, we can calculate the balance on bank, but we don't have to at the moment. Well, we, by by one quick look, you can see it's the 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 payments are more than receipts. Okay, that's one thing to notice. Hmm. Okay, so there is a liquidity problem apparently. That's why I guess he needs a loan, 10,000. For the financial factors, you can say that the loan will have to be repaid with interest. They'll, they will have to pay interest on the loan. That's a financial factor to compare the two options, right? While with, with Khalid, you know, he doesn't have to give interest. But on the other hand, again, a financial factor, he will have to share 
his profit, which is a big amount, 18,860. It's a huge amount, right? It's almost 20,000 would almost be, you know, equal. If assuming that they're going to share equally the profits, uh, he'll have to share the profits. That's the, the thing is, he'll have to share the profits. That's one thing. And that would be probably forever and until Khalid is a partner. Um, but bank loan will be once paid off, it'll be gone, right? We have plenty of non-financial factors. I just gave you one financial factor, actually two maybe, but we have plenty, tons of non-financial factors. There can be there can be conflicts, right? If he t if he takes in a partner, while with bank loan he just have to pay it back, right? Um, well, that's one thing. For the bank loan, one more financial is he will have to pay back the fact that he has to pay back the money, the ten thousand. While Khalid, he doesn't have to pay him back, right? The friend Khalid, he doesn't have to pay him back. So that's another financial factor. So a couple of financial factor, a few non-financial factors uh, should be good. You have to do some brainstorming. It's seven marks. So you have to give uh, three points, right? Three points in support, three points in against. Using financial and non-financial. Uh, or basically give three points for taking in Khalid, the friend, or three points for taking the bank loan. The two options, give three points each. And give your final decision. Okay, that's up to you, your, your your choice. I would say maybe go for the bank loan, right? Because profitability is pretty good. He's making a lot of profit, so he may be able to pay it back and he doesn't need to take up a, an extra partner. I will reveal the answer so you can stop the video, think of the answer, because I'm going to reveal. There's no, there's no point discussing this a lot because the, the answer is very logical. Okay, so let me just erase the hidden part okay okay what does it say here you get maximum two marks for the partner and maximum two marks against the partner again using financial non-financial so non-financial partner may bring fresh ideas and skills very obvious right we that's why i didn't spend too much time discussing it willie's rafiq's workload permanent source of capital shared responsibility now that's financial of course uh, against having a partner will have to share profits that's financial may result in disagreements control of business has to be shared and the other two non-financial very easy to think of right seven marks may look a lot look like a lot but they're not in in these type of questions okay um for the loan why should we take a loan? Well, <clears throat> Rafiq stays the sole owner. Profits are not shared. So that's financial. That's non-financial. Against the loan, loan interest will reduce profits. We kind of discussed that. That's a financial one. Liquidity will be affected by loan repayments. Again, that's the financial one. That we have to pay it back. The fact that we have to pay it back. Will business be eligible for loan? Is it even possible to get a loan? That's a question mark. Maybe you, you don't have to take that as a point because it's very... Um, I mean, you have better points available. Temporary source of finance. At once, it will run out. You have to pay it back again. So, yeah. I think you can easily write these. Very easily. You can come up with these points. They're given... Actually, they're even giving you up to four marks for writing for one... From one... Oh, oh wait, wait, sorry. It's maximum three. So, maximum three for partner support. Maximum three for bank loan support. And one, your decision. Up to you, right? You can make up your own decision. Right, I would say he should just take a loan because his profitability is pretty good. Right, 